Hello viewers, it's SuperGT here. Welcome to my very first Project Cars 2 multiplayer video. So we are going to be racing in the GT3 class, uh, specifically in the Porsche 911 GT3R. So a, a mix of cars you can see there being chosen. And we are around the Nürburgring Grand Prix circuit. I'm at the front of the grid. I decided to host a lobby here and we didn't really bother with qualifying. So we're just going to have a random grid. In fact, I was actually near the front on all the random grids. I think it just put me near the top for some reason every time. But anyway, across the line we go. The lights have gone green. We are away. So very quickly you might notice I'm using Chase Cam. I'm using the controller. So maybe not the best setup in the world. Uh, I think a wheel is probably better, but this okay, kind of proves that it is on playable focus, on the controller no and in the Chase Cam. So through the first turn, McLaren losing out after getting a good start, Bentley start in the lead. I've gone from the front row now down to fifth. We've actually grinded against that Acura there for a second. We both went straight on momentarily. So coming through out of the arena section, we've consolidated fifth position. So not the best start. We have lost out quite a few positions already, but it's only a lap one of four here. Plenty of time remaining. Bentley losing control, and I'm just going to punt him round. <laughs> Unfortunate for him, I, I just did not know which way he was going to go, if he could control that or not, and I just bumped him as we come down towards the hairpin at the bottom of the circuit here, just behind the McLaren. With well, you see there on the replay camera that it was a Renault behind me, but then whenever you see that car in the chase camera as you can see here it turns into an Audi magically I'm really not sure how that one works but uh, just another minor glitch in the game so you see a Renault slash Audi and it keeps changing that's the reason why there is some sort of glitch going on with that so down onto the back straight still in fifth position now the Renault's behind me which is actually an Audi as we come up towards the final chicane always a tricky corner to get right and as we go into the corner, fairly okay actually, go, uh, touching the curves nicely, we threw there okay, and a couple of guys there getting tangled up with each other, so I'm up into fourth place as we enter the final turn, the guy in first place has developed a, a, a sizable gap there, maybe a second or so, as we cross the line, it's really nice to have the time gaps on the top left of the screen, when, when we go back to the cockpit view, it's really nice to have that, so you know exactly how far ahead or far behind the people are so you can actually really uh, get um, you can actually really measure the gaps in real time it's really good like that really good to have that feature I mean having the hard is, is, um, is fully changeable you can move everything around and make them have more information less information so it's really good like that um, the hard so that feature is very very useful in this game and you're back to the race uh, catching up to the back of the McLaren now the Porsche, I think, is very good through the corners. I think I sensed that down the straights I was losing some time, but the McLaren not getting the best run for that turn. Going a little bit wide, but typically I think you don't really want to go too wide into that turn. And actually, I get a poor exit, despite, despite what I said, into the hairpin. The McLaren going very deep, and he comes back for a late apex, dipping two wheels onto the gravel on the exit. It hasn't slowed down too much, though. Dipping two wheels onto the kerb through the Schumacher rest on the entry. The McLaren very wide halfway through. I'm going to go to the inside. He's going to cover me off, go defensive. I'm going to go to the outside. And then he's actually just braked too, uh, too early there. So I've gone up into third place. The race is developing quite nicely here. We do have second place just ahead of us. First place is still a good second or two ahead of that. In fact, he's about two seconds ahead of me. And I'm just half a second behind GTR Buckethead in second place just check out that gamer picture I'm not sure what's going on there well clearly he's just got a bucket on his head but really I don't know why as we enter the final turn here at the Nürburgring Grand Prix circuit that is half of the race underway or half the race done under wraps should we say so we're crossing the line to go into the second half of the race the McLaren just easing up to the back of me I don't think it's going to be enough as we go into turn number one. A little bit too deep. 
I followed the Acura wide, and that is a common driving mistake. Don't follow the other guys off into another error. The McLaren is going to look for the cutback into turn number three. But as we go in, he's not quite going to get it. The Acura very wide is going to cut back and chop me as we go into the right-hander exiting the arena section. And he's going to just about maintain third place. The McLaren's actually got a good run on me here as we head into the left-right chicane of five and six. But it's not quite going to be enough. The replay cameras are really nice in this game, I must say. Um, it's clear they've done a lot of work to try and replicate exactly what real-life cameras are like. And they've done a very good job, I must say. It does look very nice uh, watching these races over in that replay camera. McLaren having a look into the, into, not the chicane, the hairpin. Not quite enough power or drive to get it done, though. Through the Schumacher S, dipping two wheels onto the curves once again. Really nice through there when you get it right. And again, playable on the controller, absolutely. Once you get those settings right, you really can hook up the car very nicely with the controller. It is possible. So through the uh, left right chicane onto the back straight. So the McLaren's actually dropped back a little bit and he's come under pressure from the Renault slash Audi hybrid car, whatever it is, into the chicane at the end of the circuit, breaking nicely there between the 100 and the 150 board. So she having to bail out of that corner quite early and just go across. I don't think you got a penalty. I actually I bailed across a lap ago and I didn't get a penalty or a slowdown warning. So I guess you can just about cut that slightly, the final chicane. So the Renault behind, the Renault Audi is behind now, got past the McLaren as you can see. Final lap. Can we get into second place? He's developing into a nice race. It's um, probably one of the closer races I had in this lobby. And I will actually do plenty more of these lobbies because I think when I looked online for custom lobbies there weren't actually a huge amount. So perhaps it might actually be up to me really to try and host some. The Acker goes very deep into turn three. I'm up the inside line. Is he on my right hand side? No, he's not. He's, my, he's in the mirror now. I've actually got ahead into second place. First place is going to be a stretch here unless he makes a mistake. We wasn't quite sure exactly where the Acura was there. So almost cutting him up as we go into this left hander. But just about managing to avoid a collision. Just about left him enough room. Up into second place. So we have just over half a lap remaining. Can we keep this place? Or will the Acura be able to strike back as we go into the hairpin? A little bit, uh, a, a little bit of oversteer as we go into there, but just about manage uh, to keep it under wraps. But you can see there, I have actually lost out through the hairpin into the Schumacher S. Just dipping two wheels on there once again. That line has worked for me, but not this time. As you can see there, just a kick of oversteer on the entry, and that has absolutely killed my momentum going over the gravel. And now we've got the Audi slash Renault up the inside, just putting his nose up the inside, really, and forcing me to drive wide. And actually, it's turned out to be a good move from AMS Blaze there. Up into third, his Audi once again turns into a Renault on the replay cam and back to an Audi. Coming up to the final chicane, can we do anything about getting back up another position at least? We've gone from second down to fourth. It's, busy, it's been a disastrous last couple of corners. And it doesn't look like we're, uh, we're going to be able to get back any of these positions into the final turn. No, it's going to be Buckethead in second with uh, AMS Blaze there finishing in third place. And across the line we go. It was, it was a very nice race though, I must say. And I'm just going to do some editing here so you can actually see the difference between the cars. Um, so you'll, see, you'll notice the Audi and Renault changing there. <laughs> okay. So that's obviously something to fix. Um, sometimes I think people are still choosing their car and then the race kind of starts perhaps that's why that glitch starts but this is a very interesting start check this out Nissan GTR at Road America the race hasn't even started and everyone's already spun out and people are getting penalties for that so before the race has even started people are getting a penalty um, obviously it's a rolling start you can't control it uh, so getting a penalty for the AI making a mistake it's a bit, a bit strange. But overall, I must say, um, on the controller, it's definitely playable. And the races can be very good. So there you go, guys. That's the end of the video. I do hope you enjoyed it, as always. Uh, do hit the like button if you did. And subscribe if you're new and would like to see more. Uh, Forza 7 coming out very soon as well. So there will be plenty of content for that game too. But that is the end of this one. Thank you very much for watching, as always. I hope to see you next time.
Goodbye.